Yo, 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 it's your boy West the Tech here to bring you another one of my personal favorite tech tips to help you as an artist growing your craft. All right, now today I'm gonna be answering the question, should I use a Muse for music distribution? All right, so when it comes to music distribution, it's a lot, all right? There's so many different companies, there's so many different opinions on different companies, and it's really hard to navigate through all of them to figure out which one's the best option for you as an independent artist. So I, as a person who likes to help independent artists, actually do the research for you. I look at all the different pros and cons of all the different ones, and I kind of just navigate and pinpoint to say, okay, this one is the best one out of all the research that I found, all right? This video in particular, we're gonna be talking about Amuse and how it compares to the other distribution sites, all right? So I'm not just looking at it by itself, I'm actually looking at it in comparison to everything else, all right? In my opinion, one of the best distribution companies is DistroKid, if not the best. DistroKid honestly may be the best distribution company ever, all right? But there are, there, Ditto is actually pretty close to DistroKid, but me, I still prefer DistroKid. Now, when I'm looking at Amuse, I'm going to compare it to what DistroKid offers since it's one of the better ones, all right? So when you take Amuse and you compare it to something like DistroKid, that's when you realize that Amuse isn't really all that it's cracked up to be, all right? And I'm gonna explain why. The first reason why Amuse simply just doesn't compare to other distribution companies is first and foremost is it has limited streaming stores, all right? This is a big deal, all right? When it comes to having your music as an independent artist, you want people to be able to access your music on any medium, on any platform, whether Spotify, Apple Music, Google Play, Deezer, um, radio, whatever. You want your music everywhere so people can listen to it, right? YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, all of that. You want your music to be able to be on there so that people can add it to their videos. Unfortunately, when it comes to a muse, it has a very limited, it's very limited on the stores that they actually put your music on, all right? And just to give you a visual comparison of it versus versus other companies, here is a diagram, all right? As you can see, Amuse only deals with 18 streaming stores. This is a joke in comparison to something like DistroKid that offers 150 stores, all right? It's just not even close, all right? 18 versus 150, it's a no-brainer, all right? So this is one of the biggest factors, in my opinion, that makes Amuse just not being able to, to even compete with something like DistroKid, all right? So that's the first reason, the limited amount of stores. Now, granted, it does have the two major ones, which is Spotify and Apple Music. If those are the only two you care about, I get it. But when you're dealing with the larger scope of things, when you're dealing with all the different stores that's available, it, it can't even compete, all right? So that's first and foremost. The second reason why Amuse just isn't cutting it as a distribution company for me is it has longer release times when it comes to your music. When, meaning that when you upload your music on Amuse, it takes a longer period of time before it hits all the different stores, all right? So as comparison, again, to DistroKid, Amuse, as you can see, takes two to four weeks for your music to hit all the different stores. Versus DistroKid, it can hit all stores anywhere between three to seven days, all right? Now, this could be this could be because Amuse may just be a newer company, all right? Same thing when it comes to the stores. Maybe they just don't have the same amount of stores because they're newer to the game, right? DistroKid has been here for a long time now. So that could be one of the reasons. It may not be like this forever, but as of today, this is what it is, all right? So it is gonna take longer for your music to hit all the stores. But if you think about it, it's kind of wild because Amuse only deals with 18 stores versus DistroKid that deals with 150. So you would think that it would take Amuse a faster amount of time to get, that, get your music on their 18 stores. But it actually takes longer than DistroKid, which actually deals with the 150 store. That's crazy, all right? DistroKid is dealing with more stores, but they actually get your music on those stores faster. Amuse takes entirely too long. Two to four weeks is a very long time. That means if you're one of those artists who likes to, you know, make a song and drop it as soon as possible, you would be waiting a month before that song will come out. So if you make something, let's say October 15, and you want it to drop on Halloween, it's not dropping on Halloween. It's just not doing it, all right? So that's another reason why Amuse 
can't compete when it comes to those other distribution companies. Now, I'm not saying it's always going to be like this. Again, this is just what it is as of 2021, all right? Now, the third reason and probably the biggest reason why a muse just doesn't cut it as a music distribution for me or in comparison to the other companies is simply the pricing, all right? Now, as of, uh, for full interest of full disclosure, they do have a free option, all right? So I want to mention that free option first because DistroKid and a lot of those other companies don't have a free option. But a muse's free option is not worth it in my opinion. And here's why. All right. When you're looking at the Amuse free option, the, the first thing that they tell you is that it will take four weeks, not two to four weeks, not three to four weeks, but simply four weeks, meaning that, yes, you're going to have to wait a whole month for your song to drop. All right. So it's it's not in between. It's not up to it's literally four weeks if you're doing the free option. But the funny part is, is the other options that I have, it's a less amount of time. So it's almost like they're doing it on purpose. They're literally saying, because you're doing the free option, we're going to take longer to put your music on all the stores. So that's the first thing. All right. Now, the second thing, as you can see, is that you could only release 12 songs a year. All right. This is an issue if you're one of those artists who likes to release a lot of music. If you're releasing more than one song a month and you're releasing music like crazy, this is not going to be an option for you. All right. The free option is absolutely useless because they have a cap. Once you hit your 12th release, you're done for the rest of the year. All right. Some artists I know will finish that in six months. You know, so if you're one of those artists who push a lot of music, this is another reason why the free option just shouldn't even be mentioned. All right. And the third and final reason is they actually take a cut. So it really isn't free to begin with. All right. They say it's free up front, but they actually take 15 percent of all your royalties in the back end. All right. So it's free in the beginning, but they still take their money in the back end. So essentially it's not free at all. All right. So this is why I, when it comes to the free option, even though it says it's free, I don't think it's worth it. And I don't even think it's something that you can even compare to other distribution companies, because like I said, they price things. And the only other one I think that has a free option is, is um, United Masters, but they're a whole nother animal in itself that I would never recommend anybody going with. All right. So what I did was instead of giving you the free option, which obviously isn't good, I decided to compare their second option, which is the boost option in comparison to Disho Kids basic option. All right. So here we go. When you look at the pricing, Amuse is actually $5 more than Disho Kids basic plan. Amuse is $24.99, Disho Kid is $19.99. The funny part is again, Disho Kid puts it on 150 stores. All right. Disho Kid releases it faster and distro kid is cheaper all right so it really makes no sense why someone would even want a muse right because again it just seems like it's not even in competition when you look at distro kid hell may ditto is better than a muse honestly tune core no because tune core you have they charge you per release so tune core is the most expensive one i actually did a video not too long ago that says tune core is robbing you if you haven't seen that video and you have tune core you need to go watch that that video because you are overspending on distribution if you're dealing with tune core but when it comes to a muse no i don't think it's one of the best uh, distribution companies i personally wouldn't recommend it if i'm gonna recommend a distribution company i would either recommend distro kid or ditto they're just simply cheaper better in almost every aspect all right so again when it comes to a muse it's a no bueno for me all right now again it's my opinion but i also did back my opinion with the facts on why i think that all right but of course as an independent artist it's always up to you you know do your own research and see for yourself I'm pretty sure if you do the same research I did, you'll come to the same conclusion, all right? But either way, thanks for listening. I hope this helps, and I'll see you guys next week. Peace.